Hey everyone, Cody here. And as an artist, it can be difficult to make a full-time income with your art. And this was a challenge I kind of ran into was, you know, my art, as much as I liked it and as much as I promoted it, wasn't enough money to, you know, basically make a living on. Now, I know that there are artists out there that make a living off their art, and I think that's phenomenal. Um, but there's a lot of different ways you can make money with art. And I've talked about it, you know, years ago, but things change all the time. They evolve. And, and today I want to share with you a video from a fellow artist who supposedly made $6,000 in one month with her art. And this uh, actual video came out like about a half a year ago. It was like during the summer of 2022. Um, so I don't know if anything has changed since then, but this video came up on my feed and I wanted to share it with you because if she has valuable insights on how to make money with art and people who are, you know, creating art, a lot of times we do, you know, secretly deep down want to sell it. Now, not everybody. Some people just do it as a hobby and they give it away. And I think that's amazing. Um, but if you're looking to make some kind of income with it, uh, then I wanted to share that because if she has any valuable insights, then uh, hopefully we can both glean it. I have not seen the video, so I don't know what to expect. But let's head over and we'll take a look. So I made over $6,000 in May, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the five income streams that helped me get there. Before we dive into the numbers, I just want to say to begin with that I'm not sharing these to brag or to like flex. I'm just doing this in the interest of transparency. I will say um, $6,000 in a month for art is actually pretty decent. I know there's artists that wait way, way, way more. But if you just kind of annualize that, that's what, uh, $72,000 or something like that. Now, of course, the one thing you need to keep in mind is that when you make money off of any really website when you're selling your stuff, uh, you're going to have to pay quite a bit of taxes. So, you know... Ideally, you would want to get like, you know, an LLC and set up, a, you know, a bank with that and, you know, an accounting type thing so that, you know, you can kind of minimize, you can write stuff off as deductions and stuff like that. But ultimately, you know, just keep that in mind that, you know, if she made $72,000 this year, just, you know, from that six, if she was able to replicate that six grand, um, she's going to pay immense taxes. So just always keep that in mind that when you're starting a business, a side hustle, anything that is not basically a W-2, you're going to pay taxes on royalties, commissions, uh, you know, contracting work, you know, 1099, anything pretty much 1099 is going to uh, end up yielding a lot of taxes. So just keep that in mind that anytime these artists are making all that money. This is probably gross. This is before, you know, before taxes is taken out, before even factoring in any of the, um, you know, the supplies and stuff that it takes to make the art. Ideally, um, you know, if there's something that she can share that we can glean from, I want to see if there's anything there. So um, replay the video. When I was starting out, I literally would have killed <laughs> for someone to talk about this stuff. And so I wanted to be the change basically that I want to see in the world. And I also know you guys really just appreciate the transparency on this channel. And that's the thing that I want to continue. It is helpful. And I know that a lot of times these types of videos actually make they, they tend to get less views than the actual art videos themselves. But this is the stuff that a lot of people need uh, in order to, you know, create an art business, so to speak. And I will link to this lady uh, or this video in the description so that she gets credit. Forward as well. Also, so we are in the videos. business dashboard of my Notion workspace. I built this template myself. Uh, if you're not new to the channel, you'll know that I love Notion. It is my favorite thing that I have. I don't know what that is. Have on my computer. I just like use it every single day to keep track of literally everything. And I find it really useful. So we're going to be down here in the revenue streams part of my business dashboard, talking about the income streams that I used this past month. So the first income stream that I want to talk about is actually YouTube AdSense. So I've been posting on YouTube for two years and I'm monetized. I'm finally starting to make some money. And in May, I made $1,442.91. Now, this is money that I made in May, so that I actually received from Google AdSense. If you don't know, Google AdSense revenue is like one month delayed. All right, so a couple things. First off, that is actually how I made, I actually made probably more consistent money from AdSense than I did from selling the paintings. Um, because, you know, if I sell one painting, you know, every few months for a couple hundred bucks, it, I was actually making more in AdSense than I was from the paintings. So. YouTube AdSense is, you know, it is legit. Now, you have to get it, a lot of views for AdSense to really make a lot of money. Um, 
unless you're like in a, a really high CPM niche, like, you know, if you're in the finance niche, you can make a ton of money off the ads because of the type of ads that they show to people. But, you know, regardless, you know, YouTube is a free thing that you could set up. So you could set up YouTube for free and make money off the ads. So it's like, it's almost like a, um, it's asymmetrical. It has an asymmetrical upside. So if you set up a, a channel and it makes no money, you know, you didn't really invest in anything. I mean, maybe you invest in a camera and a mic or something like that and, you know, some, some supplies to record. But YouTube, you know, is just, it's massive and you can make money on the ads and there are people who make a full-time income just from the ad revenue alone but they're pulling hundreds of thousands if not millions of views every you know every month so just keep that in mind but you know that's a it's a very real way to make money so if we're actually counting the money that i earned in may that i actually like sort of generated in revenue that would be three thousand five hundred and twenty nine dollars and seventy nine cents which is significantly higher, but because it has that one month delay in terms of payout, the money that I received in May from Google AdSense in my bank account is actually the money that I made in April. And so that makes sense. It's a little bit confusing, but yeah, that's month, basically boy. how that works. Right. So I made a little bit under $1,500 in May from Google AdSense, or sorry, I, I received, it. I'm sorry about the terminology. Uh, and then for my online shop, I have a couple of products they're mostly digital. I'm currently in the process of moving cross country. So physical products right now are kind of a no go, though I do offer that on my Patreon. But for my online shop, I made $1,138. Okay, so I don't know if she's going to talk about it more on her online shop. I'm assuming it's probably something like an Etsy shop with digital downloads. Again, I've never seen this lady before. This video just popped up in my feed and I thought it'd be a great topic to cover um but this is a huge thing like it blew up during covid people would just make these um they'd make like these templates for things right so maybe it's a cricket template or it's like a coloring book template or you know it's a party invitation template right they just come up with templates for things and then they sell the template on etsy so it's like a digital download people could just download it right from etsy after they buy it um, you don't have to host that on a website. You just put up a little shop. You post it on Etsy for whatever the, the fee is, which is usually reasonable. And then you just sell online digital goods and you don't have to ship anything. You know, it's hosted for you. And, uh, you know, you get a lot of traffic from it being on Etsy. So I'm assuming that's what it is. Um, I, I Again, I don't know for sure, but I, I'm going to make that assumption. Here we go. And on my online shop, you can find things like my workbook, this Notion template, lots of stuff over there if you're interested okay. in like how yeah. I organize things, basically. But if you want physical products, you'll have to wait until like July or August when I'm finally settled into my new place. So from Patreon, I have a lot of stuff on my Patreon. I genuinely think Patreon is a really great income stream for artists. It can be super helpful. And because YouTube AdSense income, as you saw, as I just mentioned, can be like so wildly fluctuating, it's really important to be able to have income streams that are a little bit more stable, a little more consistent. I tried a new thing on Patreon where I actually started to open some tiers up for like one-on-one -on -one mentorship if you like want advice from me or something. All of the spots for that filled up pretty fast, but that's how I was able to scale my income pretty considerably on Patreon in just like a matter of a couple of weeks. And I didn't even like publicize those tiers. They were just a thing people really wanted. And so I offered that. And I think that kind of product design, like thinking about what people want from me, how can I give that to them, is a really good way to scale your income as an artist and just in general. So from Patreon, I technically made $451, but Patreon took like 60-ish of that in payment processor and platform fees. So I actually took home $383.11. Okay, it's not nothing. Um, I think that if she's going the route of, you know, coaching or consulting, she could probably make a lot more if she's a successful artist. But, you know, this is how a lot of people nowadays make a full-time income is teaching people things as opposed to doing the thing. Um, but Patreon makes sense. If you have, uh, if you can give unique content to, you know, that's not just out on, in the world, basically, if you can give something unique, um, that's a little more like detailed or personalized. Patreon makes sense. Although I did see that she had another video that's more recent than this that said she was leaving Patreon. So I'm not sure what the thing is for that. Uh, maybe it's the fees or maybe it's guidelines or something. I, I'm not sure. 
So the sum of what I've made so far totals to $2,164.02. But because I have an audience here on YouTube, I'm able to take in sponsorships. So in May, I actually wrapped up a long-term three-month deal in terms of a sponsor. And from that, I made $2,250. Let's go. That's insane, dude. 2000 for an R channel? That's, I mean, it's not, you know crazy mind-blowing numbers but two thousand dollars for a sponsorship for three months bro that's amazing for a sponsorship for for an art channel because a lot of times our channels are kind of like a niche thing you know whatever uh but youtube sponsorship for that is uh that's insane but this is proof that sponsorships are legit now a lot of times they have like you know, maybe strict guidelines on what you have to do to promote the product. But, you know, as long as you abide by that and you guys are both open and you're in agreement on, you know, the terms, that's uh, that's pretty dope, dude. 2000, uh, um, I respect it. So that brings us a little bit over 5K. Now, she said it was a three-month deal. So I guess that would break down to about seven $800 a, a month. Uh, a little over seven. Yeah, about probably about 750 ish uh, per month, which... Hey, I mean, that's not terrible. I respect it. And if you're interested in learning more about sponsorships in general, I highly recommend that you go and listen to my podcast. My co-host, Al, my co-host and friend, Al, and I are actually in the process of making a three-part series on sponsorships for artists on YouTube and social media in general. So I would highly recommend that you check that out and go ahead yeah. and subscribe to the podcast sure. channel if you want to learn more about that. But Okay, last one. This is freelance stuff. So because I'm an artist and also I have some experience with video production, companies will sometimes reach out to me to do freelance work for them. This can be anything from freelance painting, illustration, consulting, or even freelance video production. Basically making a video that I would normally post on YouTube. Well, I'm guessing it's going to be like seven, to $800 because she said she made... 6, YouTube, 000. but I'm instead making for a company. And even just aside from that, I also have video editing experience, which means that I can edit other creators' videos here on YouTube, and I actually have a couple of clients that I do that for. So in cool. May, I made $2,040 from freelance work. So that's essentially, wait, is that right? That can't be right. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is genuinely totally unscripted. I thought this totaled up to six grand. Okay, well, uh, so she made seven grand. Uh, that's insane, dude. Freelance work, especially if that's if it truly is one month's worth of work, that is insane money. But I guess it's seven. Um, fun little twist for you there. So yeah, that's essentially how much money I made for my business last month. If you are interested in seeing how I was able to scale my income, I have a whole playlist of these income reports that I've made over the past couple of months that you can watch right here. And with that, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. All right. So like I said, I will link to this video or the channel in the description so you can definitely go check those out because you know, as an artist, that might be very beneficial to you. Um, that was kind of one thing that I never really got because my channel isn't, you know, it's not tiny. Uh, it's pretty small, though, compared to someone like her. I think she has like a couple hundred thousand subscribers or a few hundred thousand. Um, so for like her, she has a much bigger reach. So you can get sponsorships even being a small channel. If you have like 8,000 subscribers like I did. Um, you might be able to get like a $500, you know, sponsorship, which is not nothing. And I even remember watching a video that Good Mythical Morning did with Colin and Samir, where they said they asked a company to sponsor them for $300 just so they could say they were sponsored. Because there's this appearance of if you're sponsored, then you have some kind of reach, right? So ultimately, like, I think you could probably go about it. And if you have, you know, five, six figure um, amount of followers, you can probably get a decent sponsorship. It may not be great, but it's a start. So that's pretty much it. Um, the one thing she didn't really talk about, I'm going to go back a little bit. Um, I won't put it on screen, but she didn't talk about the affiliate marketing aspect. And I know that if you're affiliate marketing for Amazon, that those numbers are hit or miss. Amazon's commissions aren't very high. Sometimes they're like maybe up to 10%, I think, for like electronics or something. But it fluctuates and they've actually lowered them over time. 
Um, but there are some people who promote other things, other companies or other products or courses or whatever, and they can make, you know, hundreds to thousands a month just in affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is very like fluctuating though. So it's, it's a little harder to kind of nail that down and specify exactly what it is that's, you know, going to work for you. But it, you know, it's basically easy work because you just sign up with the affiliate program and then put the links, you know, in your description of your videos. So it's almost like free money because if nobody clicks on them, then you're not any worse off if they didn't. And if they click on them and they buy something, well, you made extra money without really doing that much work. So affiliate marketing um, is probably another way that, you know, you could go about that. Amazon is probably the biggest place to promote, but depending on what your niche is or what you're trying to promote, you could go, you know, elsewhere to other things. Uh, but ultimately, I am kind of blown away uh, actually by these numbers. And 7,000, again, is not just like, you know, it's not like life-changing income per se, but it is, you know, a lot of money for an artist. And I think that, you know, seeing some of these numbers, like $2,000 for a YouTube sponsorship, that's awesome. $2,000 for freelance work. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, if you can pick up skills that you can, you know, yeah, you can create your own art, but maybe that doesn't catch on right away. If you can use your time and skills to help some, you know, to help other artists or, you know, to uh, basically do kind of side gigs until maybe you are waiting for your art to take off, you know, you can bring in more work, you know, doing stuff for other people on a paid basis as opposed to just trying to only sell your art, which it takes time. It takes a lot of time to build up a following and to to make people appreciate what you're doing. You know, people don't just appreciate it overnight and you're an overnight success. That like never happens. And a lot of the people who are overnight successes were working for a very long time before they, you know, just kind of caught on and then overnight, you know, it took off. But, you know, there was a, I don't know if it was a famous musician or, you know, uh, athlete. I think it was a musician. And someone was like, oh, how did you become an overnight success? And like, well, it took me seven years to become an overnight success. Basically just saying that, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. It's just, you know, you have all this work and then suddenly it just catches on. So ultimately that's it. I hope this video was helpful for you. And uh, like I said, you can check out her channel. I will put the link in the description. And uh, that's about it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.